I would uh, just like to thank, where are you running to? <laughs> he found out I was reading, so he ran away. I can't read with those strange fingers. Got to be all uh, fresh up here, you know. I want to thank uh, the library, Springvale Library, my favorite library, and its great director, Chip Schrader, for allowing us to have this venue. Uh, Chip is more than just a librarian, he's a friend and he's a source of inspiration. I'm going to begin, I'm going to read for about 25 minutes to a half an hour. Uh, and uh, if you feel like walking out where Chip is going to lock the doors on you. What if love? What if love were a game played on a chessboard with its 64 squares of inexhaustible light? What complications in the movement of that light? The river is icing over. It is late November where the sun is blind and we wait for clearings. What if love were the solution in the spring? When the waters are limpid and the sky is blue beyond belief. The inner temple of self is as distant as the nebulae. Our loves are challenged and everything we thought becomes renunciation, incomplete, passing like a wind shaking metal branches. How little is understood how impoverished is our reality, our thought? What if love were bestowed by a gracious and warming countenance, like a beaver busy building its home? The planetary voice we occasionally hear is a doorway of sound and color, unshakable by the most grueling of winds. What if love were the answer finally with no questions or remorse. What if love? What if? What if? An approach, Rachel Carson Preserve. Win. What does it mean to know oneself? Is it to pass through a field and say, I have been here before. I walk the sullen path in the late day. I can hear the sea, but perhaps it is only the drone of distant clouds reaping fluorocarbons. I walk, wakening live oaks and old pine needles. There are choruses twittering, trees crowded in for a minion but making a narrow path for one to cross. The complexity of solitude is here, in the sun-blessed woods, the sculpture of upside-down trunks like wounded or dying animals. But my solitude needs another on this path. The barks are readable as nature's penknife has carved out glyphs only the initiated can read roots buried in the entrails of the woods, cattails growing down below landscape, out of the gullies, white knobbed birches. Is it too early for snow or has it fallen already in another time? If we observe this cathedral of the earth together, would we add a new twist to our own unique measure? Love unites dualities and brings one closer as if in moments of togetherness. The assemblage of pine, the message in the cones that lie akimbo on the matted earth, sharp pine needles and conifers, corpses of leaves would all speak together in a common root. The sun in its last throes of brilliance begins to fall below the knife points of the low hills, down, down, until darkness descends.
by this river, by this river I came to prize you more. You were there with me as I found my liberation among twittering mad songs, boasting rings over the water. Birds of all tribes are here, fish bob under the concentric rings, ripples and cross currents in a hazy bluish green. The wind sweeps across the mousel, disturbing the silence of the creation. Water falls gently toward the shore. I invite you to sit here with me among the world's rotations. In all of nature's recitations, come to this world with me and stay. Springville, Child of Tomorrow to David Austin. Child of tomorrow, show me the art of stillness. Connect me to all living things. There are way stations beyond myself. The otter dives fluently into the river, vanishing under the ripples. The morning dove is frozen silent and skirts up to a branch. The great blue heron tests the waters and turns around. It soars beyond this world. Child of tomorrow, let me be he who suffers to be connected to the life beyond self. The morning dove is still, a symbol of failed placation. Robin redbreast, my spirit chimes and belongs. You are part of the journey, and I, your nomadic wanderer. Home to Walt Whitman, at the altar of incense, dawn placates the wounded stones with its red interface of sky and water. So with this vision of geese on the river, there comes a rain that is tawdry and healing, ghosting the shore and the silent cemetery of broken stones. Do not linger for Mama Goose teaching her brood the ways of the world. Like Walt, I am afoot with vision, which rocks the world out of sleep, gently, gently, like a teacher. The day will sleep in my hand, but bring me a cornucopia of rain, which tenders the shoots and gauges the world with the goodness that appalls evil, with drums of denial now gone, dissipated, ruined by the sun's posturing delight. How envious we are of him, yet he and the brother walked in the bothering rain. He saw blood and built temples out of dreams. His children dying of their wounds would never see another dawn with its privilege of visions and wholeness. We must be content with the poet's lot as the world shatters with money and its red veins grow terrible with denial. I have never crossed the lands or seas that he envisioned. The crowds on Broadway are distant, repining, and the old bard waits patiently like that spider and its introspection. The moose on the dam that is not a moose. Illusion. From the distance, a dead moose, its skin flayed by the wind, hugs the dam. Once it beat with life. Now the carcass is still not terrified by any man. Therefore, its death is noble without flaw. It has come here to die alone among strangers, fearing not the foils of man. 
He has come here to die a necessary death among the sculptured rocks. Is there a difference between that cold moose and the dying tree gone to driftwood? They are one and the same. And the neighbors came running as if it were once a living thing. Come morning, the red bird will sit on the highest branch beyond human acceptance and mock us while mocking death. So too does the human drama come to an end. And we are as stones in a cemetery and less sculpted than the noble moose. Do not see him as an object, a dead, sculpted carcass. Its spirit throbs with life on a dam where the water rushes down, downward into the greater sea. My backyard. There are the grandsons of Noah, twittering prophets speaking in arcane tongues, grackles cold, black, always in the hunt on these turbulent waters of early morning. Cat, cat, chick, chat. What do they say to humankind in language that is unintelligible to us? Water birds carping in unknowable tongues like a family of teachers over the disgruntled waters. Hummingbirds wait for the blood-red geraniums. Like dive bombers, they are attracted to the smell of flower blood. Children in their kayaks skirt the river like Norsemen and follow the red-tailed hawk lusting for prey. A great blue heron like a B-29 bombs my backyard and suddenly turns around. Now airborne among the branches that fall over the water and the spidery branches reflected in the early morning waters. Cormorants and others. Birds nest inside a city pipe. Chartreuse, cracked and worn, dry for now until spring rains disturb the nest. A cormorant bobs, then craning its neck like a submarine's periscope, dives gracefully into the water. The wind drives the water shoreward. I am lost in the history of the moment while spruce and arborvita grow with the unique impulse of sun and wind. Time is like a precious stone, hard and unforgiving, but I find no regrets for the life I have lived. The skeleton of driftwood appears on the falls at the mill dam. This is early morning in Springvale when resemblance is taken for reality. Dive, Cormorant, for you are alive as most of us are not. Drive away the fear as you breast the water's flow. Have no fear, no ego that bruises easily, like the red bird on a branch. It just is. War and belief. Tattered brains of soldiers, their entrails falling through the sunken ground. What blood will you trade for blood? What mercy will you show? The red bird ascends over the wreckage and bivouacs. Water has purpose when dying is beyond intelligence. No soldiers under the sun, the blinding sun burning in every moment. Birds call to each other as food gatherers do. The sky is streaked with symmetry, the back swash of jet fuel streaking through strata, commingles with the aviation of birds, crazily crooning from lilac to spruce. The dead branches, the drifts of wood, it all comes together in a parabola, a transference of man's wrecks 
and the birds devour seeds and flit away chattering unharmed. They sing out of belief that we humans cannot fathom. They sing in a language only they can envision, but we enjoy their songs nevertheless because they sing for what we ought to believe. Morning on the river. Grackles to feeder, whippoorwill to geraniums. I sit, a watcher of the process, indolent like a slave to what I see. The clouds are high in the early morning sky. How one aspires to touch them as they are painted on with a brush, but elemental like us, air and water. That is the dictum of the soul in its journey toward other worlds. Darkness into light, and that was the first day. For my father, a bearded white man brought super knowledge to the Mayans, Quetzalcoatl, the birds are at the trough, humming, chirping, and the white-bearded man brought prophecy. So the bird's soul separates from the body and flies higher than a madrigal. What knowledge in the grackle? Canada geese that trumpet at dusk, what do we learn from their experience? Were there temples here many thousands of years ago? The river is my shrine, the place where I am at peace, watching the whippoorwills consume the red blood of a geranium. Eagles have landed here before, pickerel, beaver. This was the day my father died long ago, but he lives again with me and through me. The honking of geese at twilight are teachers, six grackles, eating from the grassy bed, whirlpool of pickerel and trout. The river feeds my longing, and I remember. Evenings, mornings. The tedious bullfrog croaks in the eyeless grass. The Baltimore Oriole, its orange breast in full array, stares down a squirrel motionless for the moment. The river is empty of its voices. The spider is in its house of prayer, and the squirrel burrows for seeds. I, a watcher of this spectacle, am humbled by what I see. It challenges all that I think. I, too, I'm in a house of prayer. You cannot live in the darkness too long, since the spider has a symmetry from the gods and waits for its prey. Such beauty to entrap the hapless insect. We worship the rainbow through the spider's web. Meanwhile, the squirrel grubs in the ground for anything nourishing. I pour over old parchments of my early wanderings. My infatuation with the East transports my senses far and wide. Sodden weather. Rain today, a beautiful rain. Smoke lies flat on the Sodden River. I arise before dawn. What engines of hope prevail this wet and solemn dawn? The long lights lose their fizzle. One perceives only a distant birth. Nothing hovers over the feeders. No bird calls down from perches. Will the sun break through? Shall I build an ark? 8 a.m., the sun is out, and I overslept. The butterfly buzzes by my ear. 
the squirrels lap over the meter until I clap my hands and they scamper. Six grackles at the feeder all partake. Now the sun sets on the mousem and the blackbird feeds again as my spirit is fed. Buddha, the day has gone cool as last night's deluge watered my ivy geraniums and New Guinea impatience. The sky is clear and free of hubris, but nothing comes to the trough. Daybreak and the clamor of the warblers, but no birds come. Black sea, tiny pellets, yet no birds draw near. The spider weaves its web blown around by the wind. It does not seek victims. It is in the act of becoming. I will not touch its beauty since it is tense with stillness. Who is the great solver of the mysteries? The Buddha says, we are our own masters. The metaphysical companion speak to the spider in its totemistic web. What the rain foretells. I bought seed today to feed a family that lives in a tumble down house, which for them is a palace. I thought of you as the rain spattered my windshield with notes of light. We are all tender birds, finding our way to the nest so fragile as those fledgling. Maybe we have lived as humans for so long we forget the kingdoms we may have known. Fear is a mighty rider that stalks me because I know so little of this universe and the self that forges its continuation. I think of you, mind, body, and spirit. I think of you and I think of my father who passed decades ago this month. I think of us in the past that destiny unfolds. I shall never know the answers, but cannot help asking. And in this spirit, I give the best of myself to you. Homage to Maurice Ravel. I hear the faint chirp of generations and the ashen sky. Rain today, silhouettes incomparably placed faint twitters of the occupying morning birds in undecipherable speech, waking up for food and forage. Do not resist those generations. The world is Merlin, the magician who sees beyond the human condition. The alchemical zone of sea and land. Here the Buddha comes, the children, the man. But human suffering needs balance. How joyful are the gulls, the wild turkeys in flight. What measure can you add to this dance? Dawn comes up like a soaring musical phrase. Darkness flowing, and the world is in love with all sentient beings. Of being. of being in the conversation. What declaration does one make between the void and the sensible world? A myth needs to be retold again and again to have true worth. Maybe the world would become whole again. What semblance of self do I grasp? What poems have I made? Poetry is a gift of the gods. Thank you.